Hi everyone, welcome to the Leadership in Action series where we interview leaders from varied fields to understand their leadership journeys. Today we have Dr. Dhananjay Kerkar with us. He is a renowned cancer surgeon and is the medical director of Dinanath Mangeshkar Hospital. Let's start with your college years. Uh, it's uh, said that you are not studious, but you are a quick learner. You used to watch a lot of movies. Uh, how did you manage to come out with flying colors and get admission to BJ Medical still? How did you change uh, when you enter Tata Memorial Hospital? Because there I think you took just one leave in four years and you used to work relentlessly day in and day out. And what did uh, those years teach you? Then moving on to, uh, I mean you can also tell us about the two major teacher student relationships in your life. Uh, how did meeting and working with Dr. Meru Mehta influence you and uh, what, what did you learn from her the most? That has still stayed with you. After that, uh, please tell us about uh, how did the idea of uh, Sanjeevan Hospital came about, how was that journey? and what challenges uh, financial and otherwise you faced uh, and you turned it around successfully into a productive hospital. So first let us start with these things. Okay, so firstly to start with we are going to discuss about my journey as a professional right from the college days or maybe even school days up to the first part of my career which was Sanjeevan Hospital where we started working as a group. So when I was in school or college, I was not a kind of the um, first in the class or always studying type of a person. Our school was Nyan Prabodhini and Nyan Prabodhini specialized in extracurricular activities. So a typically good student in Nyan Prabodhini is the one who is good at sports, who is good at outdoor activities and debates who is good at probably even going outside the state and working in other parts of the country so as to learn about our country. And the person who used to stand first in the class was not necessarily a good student in Nan Prabodhini. That was the ethos back at that time, I do not know what it is today. So from that time onwards, I had more interest in the country and life as such than only in my curricular studies. So I never focused till probably my uh, master of surgery examination, I never really focused on my um, career uh, examinations to say. So if I, when I was in 12th standard, there was a cyclone in Andhra Pradesh and that cyclone was in the month of November and December and lot of people had died on the coast of Andhra Pradesh. And some of my friends from Prabodhini came, I was in 12th standard then and they came outside my class, called me outside the class and asked, are we, we are going to Andhra Pradesh for cyclone relief, will you come? So without asking my parents, I told them that yes, I will join. And for probably one and a half months on in the 12th standard, just before the examination, I stayed in Andhra Pradesh helping people bury the dead, building houses, uh, distributing relief work. So I think 20 or 30 people from Nan Pravodini, we had stayed there for almost six weeks doing this work. So this was my nature at that time that I was not focusing on my studies. But fortunately for me, I was what we call now as a photographic memory person. So whatever I used to read once, I used to remember probably definitely at the time of exam and probably forever afterwards. So at that time, what I did in the 12th standard after coming back from Andhra Pradesh, I uh, did not go to the college after that December time. I convinced the college authorities that I was working for the country and uh, cyclone relief. So they permitted me against their rules to appear for 12th standard examination. And I read all the books cover to cover in one to one and a half months. I never solved any question paper in my life not that time, but never in my life I have solved a question paper other than in the examination. So I just kept on reading the books and appearing for the examination and that has been all throughout my life. So I have never prepared for an examination, my preparation was for the subject. 
and whatever I read in the book, I could always memorize and bring back in a reasonable fashion. So probably that was my gift and that is the reason why I could get into uh, BJ Medical College, then Sassoon General Hospital and subsequently whatever in life I did was because of this photogenic photographic memory. When I was in college, again, I used to do lot of other things than studies. So my college attendance would not have been more than 10 or 15 percent. That is my recollection. I did not know most of my batchmates. I knew very few teachers in BJ Medical College. And few college lectures that I attended, I found out that they were teaching from the book. And very few teachers were teaching outside the book which I wanted. So I kind of stopped attending those lectures and I just again read all the books from cover to cover and every exam I generally did well. In my life, I have never failed an examination. So it is unlikely that anything might have happened in between because I could always recollect what I have read. And this attitude was good for studying days because reading and knowing was enough. But when you go to a professional field, which was surgery, which I chose, at that time things were not the same. I mean, you can't read and become a surgeon. That was for sure. So at that time, my attitude was that I used to take it easy and I was fortunate to meet one of my teachers, Mrs. Mehru Mehta, who was a Parsi lady and who was a top-notch surgeon in India at that time. People from Delhi, including uh, I think Mrs. Gandhi's personal secretary, used to come to Pune to get operated by her. So she was a very renowned and very uh, dedicated surgeon. And with her, all my hobbies kind of melted away. And when she used to come at 6 o'clock in the morning and leave Sassoon Hospital around 10.30 at night. So it was like a prison and most people used to escape this prison because of just not being able to cope with it. So many of my colleagues used to run away, disappear for a few days, come back. I never ran away. Even though I should have been the first to run away, for some reason I latched on to her. Because that till that time my was, life was like a mirror where everything could fall and everything would get processed. And suddenly from that with her, it became like a convergent lens where everything would focus only on surgery. So those three and a half years I spent with her during my master of surgery, she thought she never thought anything other than surgery. I didn't think anything other than surgery for those three and a half years. So by the time I passed out, I had forgotten about movies, I had forgotten about books, I had forgotten about gymnasium and my life was only surgery for those three and a half years. Then I went to Tata Memorial Hospital, which is in Mumbai and there this got amplified because Tata Hospital has got tremendous workload and I, again people don't are not able to cope up with this kind of workload. People who are coming as residents or doctors. It is just too much workload. People are waiting on the streets, staying on the footpaths just to get into the hospital. So, and I was already trained for three and a half years. I had already left my life behind, so to say, uh, after my MBBS. So I was became a kind of a very popular uh, doctor in Tata Memorial Hospital because I was willing to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So I took almost like four or five days holiday in four years that I was in Tata Memorial Hospital. I never came to my home. I never went outside for a picnic. So all my four years went in Tata Memorial uh, Sundays I used to work in the uh, animal laboratory there, sit in the library, look after other people's patient. Because at that time in Tata Hospital, there was a method that Sunday the senior resident would take a holiday, Saturday the junior registrar would take a holiday. I was the only person who never took a holiday. So I became very popular, I got lot of surgery and I think it changed my life forever. And for the first time I understood that you are known, probably every person in the world is known by their core area of work. And you are not known for anything else. You do philanthropy, you have hobbies, but you are never known for your hobbies. You are never known for your philanthropy. You are known for the core job, whether you are a businessman, you are a doctor, you are an accountant, you are an engineer. You would always be known by your core work. And this lesson I got courtesy Dr. Mrs. Mehta as well as Tata Memorial Hospital.
because again Tata Hospital was the culture was and Mumbai has a culture of working day in and day out. Mumbai I hardly saw anybody relaxing. People really used to slog it out. And I thought that the Mumbai work culture had great impact on me because other than Mrs. Mehta, it was on a, a different scale altogether. Means the facilities, the exposure of foreign doctors coming to Mumbai, which was not there in Pune. So it had something special for me to think about as a national or global scale, which was never there in Pune. And this kind of changed my personality and I came back to Pune. And the reason why I came back to Pune was one night we went for dinner to our friend's place in Borivli. And we came back at 2 o'clock. And at 2 o'clock from Borivli to almost Andheri and beyond, I could not get a place in local to set. So I said that if there is a city where at 2 o'clock at night you, go into, you don't get a place to sit, you should not be there in that city and even other people should start leaving that city. It was, was my, and at that night I told my friend, I am going back to Pune. I mean this is too much for me. The daytime you don't get a seat, you just stand with other people, this around you is okay. But this is too, and that day I decided and I followed it up. The moment I finished my training in Tata Hospital, next day my bags were in Pune and I started working. When I started working, Pune did not have many cancer surgeons where they were only, I think, me and another friend of mine from Tata, we were the only two qualified, so to say, cancer surgeons in Pune. So we had a lot of demand from all across the society. So Pune, I used to visit almost 120 nursing homes for operations. So gynecologists would call me for gynec cancers, ENT surgeons would call me for head and neck cancers, general surgeons would call me for GI cancers and I used to go operate, collect my check and come back. So I became like a technician A grade with um, earning good amount of money, had good practice and I had no relationship with my patients because they would not inform, some would inform, some would not inform because they wanted to hold on to the patient. They did not want to give the patient up. And Tata Hospital was completely different. So I was dissatisfied when I came to Pune. I said that this is not my life, working like a technician. You want like a ghost surgeon or whatever you want to call it. People call them ghost surgeons, shadow surgeons, technicians, I don't know what. But I used to earn money, I got married, but I was dissatisfied with the way I was working. And I went to institutes in Pune at that time, whatever popular big institutes were in Pune. And I found out that most of them were interested in how much money you can make for us, how much is your practice. And at that time, my practice was mostly going out to Pune, Satara, Sangli, Kolhapur, Nagar. Wherever there is a patient, I would go there, operate and come back. So I said that I don't know how many patients would come to me and how much money I would be able to generate. But their sole interest in asking about cancer practice was how much money is there in cancer and what you can do for us. So I said that this is not going to work. So I declined whatever attachment they were trying to give me. And I said that if nobody is going to help me, I have to help myself. And that if you ask me, what was the turning point in my life? So disillusionment was the turning point in my life that here is a person who is killed, who is wanted by the society, but he is disillusioned with the type of practice that is going on. And on that day, I decided that I will do something that is different. And I don't, it would be serendipity, but at that time we had a alumni get together of Nan Prabodhini. So let me talk a little bit about Nan Prabodhini, what I got out of it and how I landed there. So Nan Prabodhini was a school where the main interest was not in education, but in, into man making. So when I was in the school, there were four houses, like if you have read um, Harry Potter, so there is Slytherin and there, there are houses there. So similarly, we had Ramdas, Dayananda, Vivekananda and Arvinda. So these four great leaders of India. So those houses were there and you have to join one of the houses and then play and perform and see to it that you become the best in that house. So I was leader of one of the houses, which at that time was Vivekananda house. So I had a lot of influence of Vivekananda's reading on me, but as well as some leadership I don't know, against my wish maybe or maybe I was just young enough not to understand it, but a leadership position from school days. 
and the greatest thing I learned picked up from there were probably my uh, samskars or my upbringing. So, because part of your upbringing, maybe I would say 20 percent comes from your home, but 70 percent of a young person's upbringing comes from their colleagues. It does not come from the home, because typically at that time you are rebellious, you do not want to discuss with your parents, your parents are doing their job, so they are also busy. So, in every young man's life comes a time when he wants to explore the world for himself and I was in Prabodhini at that time and the colleagues and the teachers I got were all working, wanted to work for India, wanted to do something for the society and Vivekananda was the teacher, the leadership was there. So, I was influenced by that teaching and then coming back from Tata Memorial Hospital, I came back in 1990. 1990. In 92, I was disillusioned in Pune. I said that this is, I do not want to live like this. I would go back to Tata and become a consultant in Tata or I would do something different in Pune. So, at that time, there was an alum alumni get together in Nan Pravodini. And suddenly, I met around 30, 35 past students of Nan Pravodini who were professional doctors in different disciplines. So, there was a gynecologist, there was an ENT surgeon, there was an anesthetist, there was a chest physician, there was an orthopedician. So, my eyes lit up. I said that there is a team here who can raise a hospital. And all of, I asked all of them that I am making good amount of money, I have solid demand in this city, but I am unhappy. Are you unhappy? So, they were younger than me and probably not getting as much as practice, but they were also unhappy about the way the whole medical profession was going on. So, this put a speck of idea in everybody's mind that yes, we can come together and do something. And we went to Nan Prabodhini School Management, uh, so that is again non-profit organization and asked them for permission that we are a group of doctors and want to start something in medicine, a non-profit organization. And uh, the school said, yes, you can, but one year you have to go around in the country, find out what are the best social medicine places in the country, mature your thoughts about why you want to do it, stay together for a year without any agenda, oblique, any organization and if you stay together for one year, we will permit you. So, we went for one year, I went to Hemal Kasa to meet Dr. Prakash Amte and work with him, I went to Abhay Bang in Gadchiroli to work with him, I went to Ghatta Prabha with Dr. Vaidya, he is a very erstwhile institute in India to work. So, I went to a lot of places in the country and we used to go there. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, do my surgeries four days, five days a week. Remaining time as a group, we would go, spend time, come back, discuss, go again. We went to Latur Vivekananda Hospital, we went to many places. We went to some uh, tertiary medical centers also. So, we went and uh, at the end of one year, we approached Nan Pravodini, who permitted us to start this Nan Pravodini Medical Trust, which was a non profit. And then probably for the first time as a group, we were in business, business of non-profit, but we were in business. Then I said that we do not have money and we do not want to put up our own money because this is a non-profit. So, how do we go about it? So, we started doing a survey of sick hospitals in Pune. And I found out at that time, 1992 or 93, six sick, hosp sick hospitals in Pune, in different parts of Pune. Those who were not doing well, unable to pay their salaries, patients were not coming. So, we approached all of them one by one. So, we were a group. So, I would go to one, somebody would go to uh, Shukra or Pet, somebody would go to camp and approach them asking ki, your hospital is not doing well. We as a group would like to run it, would you permit us? So, out of this hard labor, one hospital which was Sanjeevan hospital, they came forward saying that anyway our hospital is not running well. These young boys look promising, why not try it out? And to our great surprise, for the first year, they did not take any rent from us. So, one year without rent and then slowly increasing the rent over the period of next 10, 15 years, they made a contract with us. And I think it was a great leap of faith for them as well as for us. We had no money and they did not have a great hospital. And I think for both of them to come. So, one of the chairman at that time explained to me that, weak and strong come together, weak and weak do not come together. <laughs> so, they said that, so I said that we are not weak, we are just young and you do not call young ever as weak. So, he laughed at that and said, okay, I accept your statement and we will come together. And on December 1, 1993, we started our work in Sanjeevan Hospital. 
and the doctors then put up saying that we can put our money i said no one has to put any money we are not owners of this organization we are trustees and trustees never put up any money i will not accept anybody putting any money because we don't have and we needed at least money for first 6 months to 1 year salary because there were around 60 70 employees which we had taken from that last organization so i went out again door to door to our donors of nan prabodhini and people whom i knew from my surgical practice and asked them that we are young doctors we want to start a non profit we don't have any money and people gave which was a very surprising thing and the good thing was chantan rao kirloskar whom i met who did not donate but who advised me that young man if you want to raise money you have must have the hat in your hand so he said that unless you ask so i would not use the word beg exactly but unless you ask nobody is to going to give you any money so you want to do for society is your problem so in uh, so it's your itch <laughs> but you come to me and ask for my money i will think about it so you go so i went actually i met every industrialist every rich person in pune whom i knew or nan prabodhini knew and asked for money and we got 6 months capital i think we got it in 2 months time so it was a miracle mini miracle at that time because nan prabodhini never got such funds <laughs> so that is another that is another reflection on the power of medicine that people want to help medicine more than education this is what i learned in those two months and with that money we started this sick hospital and actually it became probably one month in in a month's time it became a sensation so it started picking up so fast that in 94 we had it inaugurated by atal bihari vajpay that again by that time it had already started becoming popular but that was a, again a turning point in this hospital's history and then in next two years by 95 the hospital was 100% full so where the occupancy was probably 5 or 6 or 3% it became 100% by 95 96 so it was again a small miracle in that time in pune city but these policies that we had studied for one year before starting the hospital they came in handy because those of the, that one year i had already traveled a lot worked abroad i had worked in all the hospitals in pune and surrounding so i had lot of uh, knowledge about bad practices in medicine and that came in very handy for avoiding those mistakes in this hospital and then sanjeevan became a sensation because of good policies so i would say that all in all that was my journey from as a professional journey from a student who picked up good things from prabodhini as a resident who picked up good things from surgery and tata memorial hospital mrs mehru mehta and then getting a group a good good group of friends from alumni association meeting just a chance meeting to land up in sanjeevan and then sanjeevan actually paved the way for our second step which is dinanath mangeshkar hospital